All right, so what we're concerned at looking at today is modeling diffusion when we don't have a rectilinear system. Um, so if we have a cylindrical system or a spherical system, that's a little more complicated. So there's two ways of basically doing this. I'm going to show you the old way that you should have some experience with, and I'm going to show you the new way. The old way is to use your generalized mass balance. So again, I guess we need some context for this problem. Assume you have a drug that is present within this capsule and that there is a drug that's going to be diffusing out through this capsule wall um, into your bloodstream or something similar like that. So let's make some assumptions, pretty much the same assumptions that we always use. Um, you're going to have a steady state once again, so the generation term is going to be canceling out. And again, you're going to have no reaction, so there's no generation or consumption of drug. Right now, when it goes out of the capsule, it's just going to be diffusing through your bloodstream. What it allows us to do is it allows us to say that um, this is going to be the mathematical expression that we use for our generalized mass balance. So maybe this requires a little bit of explanation. So J, again, is your diffusive flux, and A is your area. Remember, your J is in terms of moles per area time and your area is in, of course, in terms of area. So whenever you're writing a generalized mass balance, it needs to be, or generalized material balance, it needs to be terms of either moles, mass, or moles per time, or mass per time. So here, multiplying by the area in there allows us to cancel out this area here and say that the generalized mass balance is going to be in units of um, material per time, which is fine. Uh, the other thing is that we're saying this is at R, and we're saying this is at R plus delta R. So perhaps that requires um, some explanation as well. So say that we're calling this capsule basically cylindrical. So there's a top of the cylinder, a bottom of the cylinder, and we have this body of the cylinder. And it's all along this axis, this Z axis or so. Um, generally, when you're working in cylindrical coordinates, you have three coordinates. You have Z, which is the axis. You have R, which is moving in a circle off the axis. So as you increase the value of R, you're getting bigger and bigger circles off the axis. And lastly, you have an angle that spins around the circle like that. When we're modeling this problem, we're going to say that the thin film, so to speak, um, is going to be basically a shell of the cylinder. So if this was a soda can or something like that, diffusion is wholly occurring through um, the sides of the soda can. We're saying it's not happening through the top or the bottom of this soda can. So that's an important assumption to make. Assume there is no diffusion that is occurring out the top or the bottom of this capsule. Assume it's only through the side of the capsule. What that allows us to do is it says um, it's again a one-dimensional problem. When we were working in Cartesian or rectilinear coordinates, um, that was a very important assumption that we made that there was only basically diffusion happening in what we call the z-direction. Here, again, the z-direction is along this axis. If you have diffusion through the top and the bottom, you're saying there's diffusion on the side, which is in the r-direction, and you're having diffusion in the z-direction. So that's a two-dimensional problem. But we don't want that. That's very hard to model. Um, we want to say that there's only diffusion happening in the R direction. So there's only diffusion happening coming out of this capsule in, I guess, circular um, directions. So that's what we're saying here. And we're, we're saying that if I'm looking at the can dead on like this, then this is going to be our film. This, I guess I could even make it like that. This is going to be, our drug is going to be present here. And what we're saying is that at this point, the inner circle is going to be R, and at the outer circle, the outer edge of this thin film, this capsule wall is our thin film, we're going to be at R plus delta R. Okay, so let's bring those over here. 
it's a very important to know exactly um, how we're modeling this problem because that's where all our assumptions come in. Okay, so noting that, if we're going to explain what this notation means, um, it means that this flux is at R and this A is at R. This flux is at R plus delta R and this A is at R plus delta R. And if we're saying um, this thin film is only going to be the surface, the side of this can, this capsule, then we're saying that, that surface is going to be 2 pi R L. It's going to be the circumference of the end times the length. Again, it's just going to be that rectangular section that's going to be on the side of the cylinder. Uh, similarly, at a later point at r plus delta r, this r is going to change to be r plus delta r, respectively. But the notation allows us to just include everything nicely like this. So for now, forget about this, just know that a is dependent upon R and it cannot be pulled out of here and we can't divide by A um, to cancel A out because A is a function of R. What we can do is we can say there's a zero on the other side of the equation. We could just divide by R simply like that. Uh, we could use the derivative trick that we used in the very first the thin film diffusion example and we could just say we're taking the limit as delta R goes to zero. Um, when we're taking the limit as delta R goes to zero, that allows us to say that really just taking the derivative of whatever's inside here, in that case it's going to be JA, technically there should be a negative sign out here, but it doesn't matter because it's a zero. And if the derivative of J times the area or the diffuse flux times the area equals zero, then that means JA is constant with respect to R. Now, we could use the expression for A and say that it's the circumference times the length of the can. And because this is just a constant over here, we could absorb the 2, the pi, and the L into that. Right? Because those are constant, but this R we can't exactly call a constant because that's the, the direction that the diffusion is happening in. Just like Z last time. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to say invoke fixed first law um, in one dimensional cylindrical coordinates. If we're saying it's diffusing in circles outside of the capsule, um, then we need to say it's in terms of DC, DR. Combining these two together, we put the J inside here. But again, because we have a constant over here, we could absorb the negative D into the constant and just call it K0. After that, we could just simply do separation of variables, as we always do. And then integration will get you this. So this is your general solution. Um, in this video, we're not going to be worrying too much about the boundary conditions. Those could get pretty bad. Uh, so on that note, the other example we need to do is we need to do the generalized mass balance for a spherical drug diffusion case. So say that our drug looks something like this, oh, whoops, we have these spherical um, pills instead of the capsule sort of pills, um, then we have to model it in the same sort of way. The good part is that in most cases it's the exact same problem as the thin film diffusion of cylindrical or Cartesian coordinates. So again, steady state, no reaction. We could start with this. Uh, remember the area depends on the radius. If we're working in spherical coordinates, what we want to say is that we have this sphere and we're saying that there's again three coordinates that you could use in spherical coordinates. You could use R, which is the radius of the sphere. Uh, you could use and two angles, one along here and one along here. We want to assume that everything that happens is perfectly symmetric with regards to those other two angles and say that the only diffusion we're considering is going to be diffusion outward along the radius of the sphere. So we're just going to say it's one dimensional, we're only looking at it in terms of R. Again, that means the area uh, which is going to be the surface area of the sphere because that's where the thin film is going to be. That's going to be a function of R. 
So we cannot pull the area out of this and then cancel it out with the zero. Okay, but we can do the same trick where we divide by r, and then we can take the limit as delta r goes to zero, which is again going to give us the expression that's derivative with respect to r is going to be zero of ja. And again, if that's true, it means that ja is constant in regards to r. And now we can substitute what we meant for, for a in here, that's going to be the surface area of the sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. And because this is a constant, we could absorb the 4 and the pi into the constant. And now we do exactly what we did above in the cylindrical example. We're going to invoke fixed first law. Again, it's a one-dimensional problem, so we're saying it's only going to be along the radius of the sphere. We're going to put that in there because this is a constant. We could absorb the negative d again into the constant and not worry about it. And then separate variables once more. And then after that, we could simply solve. So over here, um, you get a negative sign again that I'm going to absorb into this constant. And this is going to be your final generalized or general solution for spherical diffusion if it is steady state with no reaction and one dimensional. Okay, so the other way of solving this problem is using, instead of a generalized mass balance, using that diffusion convection equation that we've been talking about in the past few lectures. So again, this is your diffusion convection equation. You're going to make the same assumptions that we pretty much always do right now steady state, so this term cancels out. No reaction, so this term cancels out. So you're going to get divergence, the total flux is going to be zero. Uh, we're going to assume no advection. So we can say that Na is going to be equal to J. Now the interesting part is you could simply look up the divergence formulas on some place like Wikipedia. So if you have the divergence of A, in this case with the divergence of J, um, again, we're assuming it's one dimensional. So when you're working in cylindrical coordinates, you have three coordinates, you have the radius, which they're calling rho, you have the angle, and you have Z. Uh, similarly, if you have spherical coordinates, I guess that's getting cut off right now, then you're going to have, again, three different coordinates. You're going to have the radius of the sphere, the angle, um, and the azimuthal angle is what they call it. You're going to assume, again, that it's one dimensional, so it only happens along the r direction. So these two you're not going to consider. You're pretty much going to pretend they're not there because you have perfect symmetry. So the only terms you consider are these terms that I've boxed already. Because again, you're assuming one dimensional problem. So taking those red boxes, in the case of cylindrical, if we look at it here, it's going to be 1 over r, d, r, j over dr. So that's going to simply look like this. And if we take it for spherical, then we're just going to take this box over here and say it's 1 over r squared ddr r squared times j. Now the advantage in this problem is that steady state. So again, you have this 0 over there that you could just use to kill off these r's very easily. Once we kill off those r's, we also know that it's going to be the derivative of that equals 0. So we get is that a constant is r times j, or a constant is r squared times j. Uh, okay, what's significant about that? We did the cylindrical example over here. Notice we found that j times r was constant, and we had the spherical example over here. Notice that we found j times r squared is constant. So the generalized mass balance method and the diffusion convection equation method get you to the same conclusion. And then after that, you're going to go through the exact same steps to get the same general solutions, which is going to be this for cylindrical and this for spherical. Um, how to actually handle these boundary conditions is an entirely different kind of problem.